Facebook Live and Twitter, along with AM 1230 and 104.7 FM WJOB, and also streaming live on the TuneIn app. That's five different places you can get what we are about to present here in Hammond, Indiana, along Indianapolis Boulevard, right next to the Purdue Northwest campus. We are actually in one of the buildings of the Purdue Northwest campus, and uh, we're sitting here in the Strachan Van Til Studios. My name is Jim Dedlow. I'm host of the morning show here. I do Jed in the Region in the mornings, but a little bit later we talk about money, we talk about business, we talk about things that generate, move the economy, and today is no different. Before we get to this Jed in the Money slash One Million Cups by the Kauffman Foundation segment, we've got a couple of thank yous. First of all, thanks a lot to nanasweetsbakery.com. You need to check them out. Nana is also very attentive to the needs of people who matter in that she has brought me gluten-free every week. So uh, we have today, we have a coconut nut ball, which doesn't sound nearly as appetizing as it really is, and there's no gluten in it. So just visit nanasweetsbakery.com. Also, the coffee cabin, I went out there the other day and did a Facebook Live video. 5,000 of you have watched that, and that's because it's one of the more innovative coffee companies around. And they are near the corner of 30 and 41 in Cherville on Indianapolis Boulevard. Next week, here on One Million Cups, we're going to have Tom Chorus. He's going to have the Frubli. And it is a f unique fruit and vegetable treat. And if I were just messing around on the morning show, I could do a lot with Frubli in terms of maybe doing it backwards and saying it backwards, like eel burf. And then, of course, uh, we could just juxtapose some of the letters. And next thing you know, we got one of the seven words you can't say on the radio, so I won't go there. Also, we're always looking for people to present their unique ideas here at One Million Cups, where it's the beginning of this startup entrepreneurial business community, and it's happening right here. And you can present whatever you got going. You got an idea. You got a, an innovative charity. All you got to do is go to Handley M at pnw.edu. That's H-A-N-D-L-E-Y-M at pnw.edu. She has a unique approach to dealing with stress in law enforcement. You guys know if you think right now, hey, what's the most stressful job you can think of? Law enforcement's right up there, especially in this day and age. Tiffany Seibert has come up with this idea to help Cops breathe their way through some trouble, through some stress. We're going to hear about it right now. We're going to hear from our live audio. Uh, give it up, live audience, for Cop to Yoga. Good morning. Thank you to Jim Dedlow and the nice folks here at WJOB and to Mont Hanley and Million Cups. Today I'll be talking about Cop to Yoga, the program that is the essence of my company, Urban Turban Yoga. When I was asked to, um, to come here, the question was, is your company for profit or is it not for profit? And my company falls into a column called For the Good. The actual word yoga is a Sanskrit word that means union, joining together. And the mission of Urban Turban Yoga is to join together unlikely partners and unlikely elements, bringing forth good for the greater good. The Cop to Yoga program joins people in uniquely stressful professions up together with, uh, with the beneficial powers of yoga and classical music. Cop to Yoga's primary partnership is with the Chicago Police Department. They were early adopters and they've inspired the, uh, the customized work that we do together. The program is now in three Chicago police districts. So let's go back to how this began. Remember back in November 2015, when the violence on the Chicago streets was national news every single day. I was on my mat one morning, and all of a sudden it dawned on me, the Chicago police need to do yoga. It will help them so much. I called and spoke with Sergeant Sean Sisk, who runs the Community Alternative Policing Strategy in the 24th District, which is my neighborhood. So we agreed to meet up, and I said, when's good? And he said, can you please come now? So this is how it started. The technology of yoga breathwork is highly beneficial for all of us, 
especially though for those who experience a large amount of corrosive stress on a daily basis that really needs to be dealt with in real time. The program has changed since we started. Uh, what we typically think of as just a, a classic yoga class on mats, we started that way. And then it moved into doing uh, yoga breath work meditations taught right in the roll calls. The name of the class that I teach is roll call. So what is roll call? Roll call is three exercises over seven minutes taught five days in a row on the same shift. Officers are in uniform and they are sitting in chairs. Roll call is done listening to classical music. It just creates this very relaxed environment for everybody. Uh, for me, joining anything with classical music is just a passion. I've, um, I've been a musician my entire life. I have a degree in music from Roosevelt University in Chicago. And you can access our playlist on the website, cop2yoga.com. Uh, so now that we know what roll call is, why does it work? How does it work? Long, deep breathing stops the production and flow of the stress hormones that flood our system during fight or flight. It activates the opposing parasympathetic nervous system response to quickly rebalance us. It slows the heart rate, lowers the blood pressure, reoxygenates the blood cells, it changes our mood and outlook overall and um, just brings us back to a calm place. This is not new. This is taught in military science. It's taught in police work. Uh, they call it tactical breathing. They call it combat breathing. This is also part of ancient yoga science. What we do in roll call is we take it a step further and activate the endocrine system to join in with the parasympathetic system, turning it into a yoga breathwork meditation. The yoga breathwork meditation fosters a deep awareness of our inner powers, and that's key because we bring our highest and best selves to serve because we are connected to the place where compassion for ourselves and others resides. I've got a story that illustrates this. So just recently, one of my students pulled somebody over for rolling a stop sign. No one here has ever done that, I, I'm sure, right? <laughs> um, you know how stressful it is when you get pulled over. So he went up to the window and said, let's take a few breaths together, and then we'll talk about what you did. Now, <laughs> the officer did two things by doing this. He completely diffused the stress. Of course, it was very, very unexpected that anybody would do this. But all of a sudden, the stress was diffused. And he made a dream of mine come true. When I started this program, my dream was that the Chicago police come over and pull you over and say, let's take a few breaths together. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this is not a dream any longer. This is happening now. Uh, you probably thought to yourself, okay, there are cops out there that don't want to do this work, right? That they, think, um, that they think that it's just too pansy, they're just not going to do it, this is what they tell me, I'm not into this, I'm, I'm too macho for this. And my response to them is, look, if you're into power, here's a whole bunch of power that you are not using. So the constant message is to remember to breathe. They have all kinds of collateral, which I will give to you uh, later on today, that, um, that they can use that reminds them to breathe. Plus, it's also on the website, coptoyoga.com. So let's go back to that moment in 2015. What happened at that meeting with Sergeant Sisk? He asked me, what is Kapta Yoga? What does it mean? And I said, um, it means acknowledge the fact that we are all connected, connected to ourselves, connected to each other. It's an awareness of our inner powers, and it is compassionate people in service to others. Rogers Park is in the 24th District, way up on the far north side, and um, it's a longtime activist community. I asked myself, what can I do as a citizen to address this issue that we have in my city and in our country, which is how do we foster trust between our police officers and ourselves? Well, the answer is start a program called Cop to Yoga. And to quote one of my teachers, live your yoga. Finally, we all know that peace begins with each and every one of us. We end roll call by my reminding the police officers that we all have the right to remain silent 
and connect to the peace within. And with that, I thank you so much. Thank you for working for peace wherever you are. All right, all right. All you folks out there listening on the radio, on AM and FM radio, this is Kapta Yoga, and I will hammer the name again. Say it for me, would you please? Tiffany Seibert. Seibert. There it is. <laughs> I keep wanting to say Seibert. So it's Tiffany Seibert, and uh, she has Kapta Yoga, and you can check it out at kaptayoga.com. You are listening to a version of One Million Cups and or watching it on Facebook or Twitter and we have a live studio audience, and we'll get to some live questions. Also know that you can call in right now on the air at 219-845-1100. Also, uh, Sam Michael will bring up a text line if you want to text in a question or a comment to 219-845-1100. And, of course, you can comment or anything on the Facebook page also. All right, so we have the impact of what you want to do socially you want to do something good in the world. You had that eureka moment where you are on your mat, hopefully fully clothed in a, uh, in a yoga setting. And uh, you, uh, you came up with this idea to bring the power of breathing and yoga to law enforcement. Great idea. It sounds like it may have some legs, but how are you going to make money on this? Well, it depends. Um... I think that there's a number of ways. There is a thing now called social franchising that I'm in the process of exploring. But um, we're in three districts right now. I want to be in all districts, and I'd like to be in the police academy. And I think that that means that the city of Chicago needs to give me a contract. It doesn't need to be forever. But I already have two teachers that do exactly what I do, whom I trust immensely uh, to take this work forward. We, we have the same training, exactly, and the same perspective on this so let's look at that let's just say that happens yeah. uh, there's people that make money as yoga teachers yoga instructors teachers of yoga instructors um, there is that route what if this what if uh, Detroit or right here in Hammond and you never know Chief Doty might be listening he's like hey man you know let's deal with, let's right. what does she have to say uh, maybe Chief Dowling and Sheriff <clears throat> and go down the list and they're like, you know what, our guys are kind of stressed. Let's see what, what this program's all about. And then all of a sudden you have eight or ten of these programs that want to be a part of you. How do you handle that kind of possible growth? Um, I believe that this really actually needs to be licensed. So the plan needs to be um, agreed to, set in stone. My attorney needs to review it, obviously. It just needs to be legal. It needs to be clear, concise, because it's really not that complicated and license it and um, and take it forward. So if you guys follow what we do here at One Million Cups or when I interview people in Jed and the Money, we get people at different stages of development of their business. We have folks that already have prototypes and they may have a lot of revenue already, may have long-standing businesses, it may be a charity. There's also stuff that's kind of just getting going. And perhaps that is where the community can have the most impact in giving you feedback. A lot of the people in this room right now have already gone through all these stages. And, uh, you, you know, that, that would be one thing that we could do for you. But, you know, one of the things that we always ask is, what can this community, in your mind, I mean, you're, you're appearing here, you're going on Facebook and Twitter, what would be cool to get out of all this? Well, I think that... Um just an awareness that this needs to happen, right? An awareness that yoga is not what people think that it is. You know, it's not great yoga pants and going to a class with your coffee. And um, it's, it's much more meaningful and it's much more deep that we can do more when we're together than we can when we're divided. And also there are, um, I was just down the street having a coffee and uh, noticed a nurse. Nurses are really a group that I want to work with, and I just barged in and <laughs> gave her my card, and she said, oh my gosh, I'm going to use this today. I'm really stressed out. You know, so it, it's really little things, and I know that that's not monetizing it, but I think being on the right path leads to that place. Mont Handley is the executive director here, and Mont and I are both shaking our heads because the last two things we've had 
There's different benchmarks. Eric is very good at verbalizing this, and maybe I'll ask him to do this, but there's different ways of putting value to what you're doing. One is yeah. obviously financial value, and then there's other benchmarks of, you know, how much good you're doing in the world. I mean, that's another way of measuring it. But twi twice in two weeks we see, Mott, and maybe there's something going on here that maybe it's not just money. I mean, we're here in the commercialization center. M many of the things that come through here are based on, all right, how do I get to this benchmark, this benchmark, this benchmark, and they're all about making money. Yeah. And, it, and it's kind of cool to see uh, the last two things that we've had come through here. That's not the only benchmark. Hey, we are live on the radio here and uh, doing uh, things a little bit differently ourselves here, and we're able to take phone calls. One of the things for the live audience, though, is that when we bring the phone call in, we've got to turn our mics off, so we can't talk directly to Dave. Dave, you're it. Uh, what do you got to say to Ms. Seibert? Good morning. Uh, thank you for expanding yoga. I, um, I do yoga. I enjoy it. And I uh, just, a question that I have in, is if it's something you have thought about, yoga is mind and body. And not everyone, pointing to Jed, would be do yoga in the morning, then go to Munster Donut. Okay. <laughs> Uh, it's, it's mind and body. It's putting good fuel in your body. Uh, I, I think the more research you could, uh, obtain from yoga is a person is healthier. Uh, in, in that regards, uh, if you could bring a yoga program to any, uh, any, any business, not just to stressful, our, our, our first responders is they are healthier people. In that regards, the healthcare costs would be lower. The loss of man hours for calling off would be lower. So it would be a win-win uh, when you bring someone in mind and body uh, and uh, you, you get that on the same plane, you're going to have healthier, happier people, thus uh, cheaper person. The, healthiest per the cheapest person to insure is a healthy one, and yoga could lead someone down that path. And I'm, I'm just wondering if you've had thought of that end of it uh, when, when you do – promote this uh, of loss, you know, so it's good, you'll have l less loss of man hours and your health care costs should, should possibly go down because people are going to be healthier. Thanks a lot, David. We appreciate it. Go ahead and uh, drop Dave off of there. All right. You know what? I hadn't even thought of that. The cost, the cost factor. Well, I have thought of that and I have taught on site in corporations and that is something that um, that's needed. You know, um, at this point, I'm one person with a full time job. And so, you know, you can do what you can do. And currently, my focus right now is, this is a seven-minute program, and this is the most effective seven minutes I can give. And it's also pain-free, <coughs> stress-free, and all you need is a lung, right? No special equipment, <laughs> you know, nothing. So you can take it wherever you are. There it is. Uh, that's Tiffany Seibert. Do we have anybody in uh, Barb and then Tom? Let's go to Barb first. And let's see. I am going to ask Mont to come over here and shift that camera over onto these folks if you can. And uh, Mont Hanley's the uh, associate director here at the Purdue Commercialization Center. Let me see if he can't get a – there he goes. He's, he's uh, got a camera on Barb. Barb, go ahead and <laughs> lean in and talk to that mic, please. Okay. Um, two quick questions. One – did the guy that was stopped at the stop by the cop, did he get the ticket? He did not. <laughs> okay. Well, now I know he the secret. <laughs> now I know the secret. And second, <laughs> um, do you teach all shifts or just the day shift? Actually, I have taught all shifts. Last week, this was a goal of mine, too, besides, you know, the breathing with the pulling over. I really wanted to teach the midnight shift. So uh, I taught the midnight shift in the 24th district. They do two midnight shifts, one that starts at like 9 o'clock, another at 1045. And typically these are a lot of the younger guys because you need seniority to be able to actually get, a, you know, a day shift. And you need a lot of seniority for that. So um, for a lot of younger guys and um, for them, some of this was a review. Uh, you get some of them where they've taught this work in the academy. They kind of go back and forth with, yes, we're teaching it, no, we're not teaching it. So, again, that's an area for me to explore further. But um, these guys were super receptive to it. And, um, you know, and they didn't leave. They didn't crumple up the stuff. And it was good. I had their attention. And they did well. Yeah. Thank Tom. you. 
first of all, Tiffany, you did a great job. Oh, thank you, Tom. Uh, <laughs> you're <laughs> you're, you're not selling you. a product. You're uh, selling a solution to a problem, mm. and I think everybody can agree that stress in law enforcement is a huge problem. Yeah. Um, kind of what, what you just said, can you maybe do a little comparison between the reactions of the officers during the first session that you did and compare that to the maybe the final session that you did. What was their what was the difference in their reaction? You mean like when I first started? The very first day you walked in and, and announced what you were going to do. What, what were their reactions? Oh, yeah. What's on their faces? That type of thing. And and how did they respond over a period of time? Well, the most of them were open to it. Um, pretty much because I think they were yelled at and told that they needed to do it. Right? <laughs> we have a speaker here. You know, pay attention. Um, but. Uh, and there, there were always people that said, you know, I'm not going to do this. A lot of those folks have come over. So that's really great because a lot of them, they just talk. And this is experiential. You can talk about something till you're blue in the face and until you do it and you feel it. And then you say, oh, you know, this is great, right? There's always going to be somebody, Tom. It doesn't matter where I am, best district, best shift, all these folks. There's always somebody that is just really not going to do it. They're going to look at their phone the whole time, and, um, you know, they're agitated, and um, I get that, you know. So what this teaches me is clarity of intention. I am there for this purpose. I'm not there to be someone's mom or, you know, that sort of a thing or, you know, yell at them and say, you have to do this. I mean, what is the point of that? I'm there for a reason that I'm clear on, they're clear on, and it's up to them if they want to do it. So, yeah. But we have had people come over, and that's really humbling. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Tom. Let's go to Nana. Nana has a question. Nana, you're actually going to have to get off that seat. I'm pretty sure that's the first time that's happened during this. Oh, it's going to reach over there. There you go. Plus, you got to get over here so we can get a camera Hi. on you. Good Mom's presentation. Mom's going to put a camera oh, on you. Oh, thanks, Nana. But what I wanted to ask you, yes. have you considered keep starting data? So the way they were when they first started and the results after doing this for a while and if the if it goes down that would be a good advertisement for your program yeah I, I do keep data I keep stats on every single class that I teach that is a good question in <laughs> that uh, Eric over here and some of the others are always giving us the benchmarks and to be able to validate your product I've already had two pretty good points come up one is the you know the cost savings on insurance is that going to be able to be quantifiable and then some of the other data of you know that that can be uh, put together I think that Debbie wants a question um, so just to clarify you don't really do a full yoga class it's a it's a you said a seven minute yes so it's more for the mind yeah it's it's a stress it's a, it's stress neutralizing yoga so when we started out it was really yoga on mats where you're changing into gym clothes and that sort of a thing. Uh, a lot has changed in the Chicago Police Department. A lot of people have retired. They moved to a different shift, you know, all that sort of stuff. So they've got less and less and less time. So really my choice was to evolve as they evolved or not evolve at all, and that wasn't going to be an option for me. So we've evolved from what you would consider to be just a basic classic yoga class on mats, about 40 minutes to taking it into yoga breathwork meditation, going deep for seven minutes, and that's it. So maybe at the end of this, not maybe not while we're on the air, but maybe you could give us a one-minute version. I totally will. That, I, I totally think that would be great just so we can kind of get an idea. we do that right now? Because we don't want to lose it for Facebook. We don't want to just uh, wait until we're over with it. Uh, give us an idea. Do you want, want me to make one of my people do it or come up here and do it? Or no, no, we can it? all do it. Right. We can all do it. Yeah. yeah. Sam doesn't believe in anything. He's, uh, he's got a job. He's so stressed out he won't even lose his focus. Uh, but we will all participate. Everybody here but Sam. I'll everybody say. participate. Okay. You're sitting down. Um, feet hip width apart. Nice and solid on the floor. Nice straight spine. Put your hands on your thighs and just pull yourself toward me. Okay. Slight chin tuck. Go ahead and close the eyes or relax the eyes. Whichever is best for you. All right. And I want you to begin to inhale and exhale in and out through the nose, breathing in deep into the belly, chest, neck, head, all the way up, and from there all the way down. Good. And again, you're going to notice right away on the second breath that your breath deepens. This is why this works. 
the opposing parasympathetic nervous system response completely bringing you back into balance. Just let it flow. Don't force it. Now with your eyes closed and you're still breathing in and out deep, in and out deep through your nose, just look up to that place in the middle of your forehead from the inside out. You'll feel a slight bit of tension, your optic nerves engaging. And this is pressing on your command center, your pituitary gland, your pineal gland. Now, the reason that we do this for seven minutes is it typically takes four minutes or longer for you to feel the benefits of this. So that's why I chose the seven minutes. But for all of us here to, to get a taste of how this feels, you may actually start to see a bit of a lavender color when you look up to that spot. But go ahead and continue to breathe nice and deep, inhaling and exhaling through the nose, all the way in to the belly, chest, neck, head, all the way up. And from the very top, all the way down. Good, 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 good. Breathing in calm and exhaling any sort of feeling of self-limiting thoughts. You are limitless. Remember that. Big inhale. Send the breath to where the tension is in your body. Maybe your shoulders, lower back. Exhale any sort of feeling of judgment. Just let that soften. Any sort of feeling of negativity. It'll probably be back. But for right now, let it go. Nice big inhale, deep into the belly, chest, neck, head, all the way up and beyond. And from there, exhale all the way. Now, I want you to take a nice big deep inhale, biggest inhale you've taken all day long. Suspend the breath at the very, very top, just for a moment or two. And notice where it is in your body north, south, east, and west. Bigger than when you began. Go ahead and exhale whenever you're ready. And slowly begin to open your eyes and come on back. Very nice. You will have handouts and cards with all of this breath work on it before you leave. Uh, Tiffany Seibert, that's, uh, anybody else, any uh, comments or anything? Uh, Mont Hanley has a, Mont, come on up so you can get in the camera here. Once again, uh, Tiffany Seibert, you can check it out at cop2yoga.com. I figured this out, Tiffany. What? You have your own yoga studio, right? And this is all promotional to get <laughs> people into your yoga studio. No, I don't. <laughs> anyway, I think what you're doing is fantastic. Thank you, Mont. Thank you for being more than just someone who complains and actually did something. Oh my gosh, that means a lot. Thank All right, you. Guys, uh, here, I think we're going to finish it up. Jesse's the last one. Jesse, come on up. Right up here. And uh, once again, for those listening on the radio, radio it's Tiffany Seibert, if you just got in your car. And uh, she has cop to yoga, and you can watch all that she presented. As soon as we're finished here, it'll show up on Facebook and on Twitter. Jesse. Oh, thank you so much. You're welcome. Uh, I never did yoga before. Till now. But till now. But I think it's a necessary thing because uh, I don't know the scientific reason for it, but as I did it, I think uh, maybe my blood went to my brain and my brain was able to think clearer and ideas began to come. And I had an idea. My wife has dementia mm. and sometimes it's very hard for her to sleep. I think you just gave me the reason or the antidote to her problem, to have her to breathe. Together we breathe when we go to bed. We just breathe and, and just let everything go from your mind. And uh, I believe that uh, because I did feel a little sleepy, too, at the same time. <laughs> you know. Good. So, um, so, so that may be another area that you could focus on because there's a lot of people with dementia today. You're absolutely right. And uh, so I want to thank you, and I certainly want a card from you, too. Oh, yeah. There you go. Yes. Well, thank you. Thanks the a lot, Jesse. You're welcome.
Jesse, uh, I don't know about you, but when I close my eyes and do all that stuff, all of a sudden stuff from the 60s starts coming <laughs> back in my head. You know what I mean? <laughs> hey, uh, let's hear for Tiffany, guys. Thank you so much, everybody. This is going to close our portion on Facebook and Twitter. And once again, anybody watching this anywhere in the Midwest, if you want to present your product, your service, your idea, your existing business, whatever it is, get a hold of us. We want to bring in, we want to show people with energy and innovation going on in their heads that's being transferred into action. So on Facebook and Twitter, until next 1 Million Cups, I'll see you.